Good morning. One balmy day in the South Pacific, a Navy ship saw smoke coming from one of the three huts on an uncharted island. Upon arriving at the shore, they were met by a shipwrecked survivor. He said, I'm so glad you're here. I've been alone on this island for more than five years. The captain replied, if you're all alone on the island, why do I see three huts? The survivor said, oh, well, I live in one and I go to church in another. What about the third hut, asked the captain. That's where I used to go to church. <laughs> I think that's <laughs> So we're going to look at what's up with those yeah buts today. According to the Urban Dictionary, yeah but is defined as a phrase used to agree with an opponent in an argument, yet to continue contempt, disdain, and disagreement with the conclusion. Or two, it's a common way to disagree with a specific sentence that a person says, but you disagree with the overall ideas. How often do we find ourselves in these conversations? And how often do we recognize that this is a conversation that we have with ourselves? When we have an idea or a passion for something new to explore, Sometimes we are dealing with our own doubts, which limit us from our full potential. Harvey Schiller, a success coach, tells us that you may have the yeah but syndrome. And you can block your own success if you find yourself saying any of these. I don't want to change the way I do things or view things. I have a system that works for me. I can't do it all, so I don't try to do any of it. <laughs> That's not for me, not my style. We've tried that before, or it just won't work here. He says, you'll block your own success if you don't change your thinking, so you can move beyond your comfort zone and stimulate your own creative impulses. We set our limitations through our beliefs. Have you ever wanted a new career, but you thought you didn't have enough skill or education to apply? Or you had a unique invention idea, but never sought a patent? Or you wanted a special relationship with someone, but you talked yourself out of developing it? Or what about that dream vacation, new home, or new car? but you won't explore the research or begin to set the intention. Fear can be a component. Fear can be an element to yeah, but. Fear is the opposite of faith. You need faith and conviction that all will turn out well. Jesus the Christ explained to his disciples that they had failed to heal because of lack of faith. They protested. They said they did have faith in God. Then Jesus explained to them that this wasn't sufficient. They must have the faith of God. And the faith of God is very different from the faith in God. This is a starting point. Check your belief, acceptance, and conviction. Then treat your unbelief. Let go of your limited beliefs. Affirm your oneness with God. Know that there is a power within you and you can use it. Our own doubts set our limits. We are not limit by, limited by the boundaries of our thinking. Ernest Holmes says, if we say with Emerson, there is no great or small to the soul that maketh all. 
then we may experience a greater good because we have conceived it. Therefore, our belief set the limit to our demonstration of principle, which of itself is without limit. It is ready to fulfill everything because it is infinite. So it is not a question of its willingness or its ability. It's entirely a question of our receptivity and belief. We have the ability to control our thoughts and tap into the divine presence within. We are co-creators. We have the ability to transcend previous experience and rise triumphantly above them if we let go of our mental restraints of yeah, but. If you feel stuck, use affirmations to shift your thinking into believing the possibility of your dreams. Affirmations are powerful tools that assist us in embodying spiritual principles and claiming for ourselves health, wealth, joy, and abundance. We must accept and embody that which we are affirming, believing the words we speak at our core. This spiritual practice provides an opportunity for growth and for the release of limited beliefs and ideas that we hold about ourselves, beliefs that hinder us from a demonstration of that which we are affirming. Simply put, when we believe, then our thoughts, words, and actions are demonstrated. Don't let yeah but put you in the if I woulda shoulda club. <laughs> or let the yeah buts of others throw cold water on your ideas. This is a spiritual power within us that seeks to reveal itself. And so we need to be receptive to it. Ernest Holmes reminds us that we are surrounded by unlimited possibility, which becomes the law of our lives, which we must consciously cooperate to have the fullest use of the infinite presence in which we live and move and have our beingness. Can you imagine what mental transformation it takes to experience spiritual transformation? It all starts with our thinking and our vision for our lives. Don't become a prisoner of your own limited thoughts. To quote Michael Beckwith, we come here for our souls to unfold. If we were to leave today, did we give our gifts? Did we give more blessings than pain? Did we serve? Did we leave a vibrational imprint on the planet? Did we give more than we took? We cannot be cowards. We must have the confidence and courage to speak of the possibility and walk in that direction. When we let go of the yeah buts, we tap into unlimited potential and we walk into the next days of our evolution and unfoldment. Yeah, buts deny. They affirm our limited view of our wish, desire, or intention. If we wish to demonstrate, which means to exemplify, to manifest, to bring forth, to experience our heart's desire, we have to check our yeah, buts at the door and enter into the kingdom. Where is the kingdom? It is within us. It is the God essence of us. It is fearless because it is who we truly are. Divine spiritual beings, one with God. Before I go, I'd like to remind us that Ernest Holmes reinforced that we must conceive of the spirit, God, governing, controlling, and directing man's activity. God is not a failure. Therefore, we must resolutely turn away from every experience which has been negative and from every experience that denies God. 
Don't let yeah buts deny God. All change comes from within. Eckhart Tolle says in his book, A New Earth, there is a new species arriving here on the planet and you are it. Thank you. Oh, well, to everything that Reverend Nadine just said, I say amen. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> not that we planned this or anything. The yeah, but voice challenges an idea, a perception, a mindset. And as we just heard, it can put a damper on those ideas that support our greater experience of God's nature that resides within us and around us. However, it can also challenge the mindset that keeps us confined and prevents us from stepping into those greater experiences and expressions of love, of joy, of abundance, of wholeness, of beauty, that which we truly are at our core. For every yeah but that we heard from Reverend Nadine that might shut us down, there can be a yeah but that moves us forward. Yeah, but maybe I don't need that type of education or I can go and get that education, right? So this yeah but theme triggered a memory of a woman I visited years back in a senior nursing facility. She was a white woman who had lived most of her life in the Deep South. I think she was in her late 30s, early 40s when the civil rights movement and desegregation came up, uh, began. And I remember her saying to me, honey, I was way ahead of my time. <laughs> And she talked about whenever she heard those angry voices talking about, you know, it's been this way all the time. This is going to cause so much trouble and chaos. And why can't they leave well enough alone? Her response was, yeah, but just because it's been this way all this time, don't make it right. <laughs> Her, yeah, but was challenging the status quo and saying there's a possibility of something greater. And I'd like to say that I'm a proud descendant of generations of yeah butters <laughs> whose yeah butting has really blessed my life in countless ways. <clears throat> my maternal and paternal grandmothers were both such incredible influences on me, my Granny Price, my mom's mother, who was a Roman Catholic woman raising her children in Southeast Asia at a time where the belief was of the church, if you weren't Catholic and at least Christian, you were not going to heaven. If you weren't Catholic, you might have to do some time in between earth and heaven, if you weren't Christian, you were going to hell. Now, my grandmother's reaction to that and what she taught her children is, yeah, the church teaches that. But if we look at the teachings of Jesus, it was all about unconditional love for all. She said, there is no one right religion. All religions are good. Everyone is loved by God. And besides, I don't believe in eternal damnation. An all-loving God would let us, when we learn from our mistakes, move forward. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so when my mother, who was raised this way, challenged the nuns who told her this was what she had to believe, and she said, yeah, but I don't, she was punished, but she remained steadfast in believing in that which was for greater love and tolerance. My grandmother in France, Granny as we called her, 
She, when questioned on this uh, church's stances on moral issues, her reaction to that was yes. She was more of a yes person than a yeah person. <laughs> yes, I know that that's what the church says, but let's remember that the church, all religions are finite human institutions trying to understand something that's so much bigger. God is bigger than all our religions combined. And we're all evolving into a greater understanding. So when the church puts out a rule, we need to ask ourselves, does this make me more loving, more kind, more compassionate, more empathetic, more accepting and embracing of others or not? And if the answer is no, we should challenge it. Ernest Holmes himself, our founder, gave us a directive that we should never take anything he said as the final word. He said, don't take anything I wrote as the final word. These are finite concepts helping us to understand the infinite. He encouraged us, if something didn't make sense, say, yeah, but, and work with it so you can come into your deeper understanding and deeper relationship with that divine presence within. So now that we've totally confused you, <laughs> So there's the, yeah, but, that can hold us back. And then there's the, yeah, but, that can open the passageways to greater good. <laughs> I like to think of it as, it's the war of the yeah, buts. <clears throat> you know, it can be hard to discern sometimes which one is for us and which one is against us. Which one is for us to just try and stay safe and which one is for us to step into greater experiences of our divine nature? And you know, when people come to me for spiritual guidance, you know, asking me, how can I tell if this is the voice of spirit that's calling me into some greater experience of good or my ego just clinging to certain ideas of what I feel good should be or is about? The wisdom that I can offer is, I don't know, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I do know that there's a part of you that knows. Divine wisdom within you knows. And you know, Ernest Holmes, in a variation of what my grandmother had said, he told us to ask ourselves when we're contemplating some greater good for ourselves, does this thing I wish to do express more life, more happiness, more peace to myself, and at the same time harm no one? If it does, it's right. So that's a place to start, is to ask ourselves that question. And even then, it may not be clear, but that's why we keep doing our spiritual practices, Reverend Nadine encouraged us. We meditate, we pray, we affirm, we study, we work with our practitioners, we are of service, we tithe. We do all these things that activate that spiritual nature within us so we can feel its vibration. And another great practice, if you're really confused, is journal. Get up in the morning and do your morning pages. Just let all your stream of consciousness thinking, put it down on paper and then tear it up. It helps to purge all those yeah by different thoughts so you can get clear. Stay with the vibration of the experience that whatever your outer idea is, it represents some vibration of God's nature in you. Joy, love, abundance, freedom, whatever it is. Stay with that. And notice in your meditation if the yeah, but thoughts produce a response that feels constricting or expansive. Fear constricts, love expands. It may take time. But as you keep at it and keep affirming, there is that within me that knows the way and I'm open to its guidance. There's that within me that knows the way and I'm open to its guidance. As you keep at this practice, I guarantee the yeah but voices that are holding you back will fade and the ones that open the gates to your greater experience of God's nature that lives within and around you always will come through loud and clear. Dr. Mark, please take us home. <laughs> hmm. Well, 
Weren't Reverend Mark and Reverend Nadine wonderful? They're just like, um, how would you say? They're like two cheeks of the one divine butt. Yeah. 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 So, with that high-minded thought, let's pray. So we turn our attention inward now, recognizing that right here, where we are, the fullness, the allness of God, God's spirit, God's love, God's truth, God's intelligence surrounds and fills each and every one of us. And I also know that on the unseen side of life, we are all connected, connected with God, connected with each other. And I know that the truth that we've heard today lives within us, in our hearts, our minds, our very being. So I accept for each and every one of us that we are truly divinely guided, that that spirit of the living God within us rises up and reveals to us in a way that we can use and understand exactly what we need to do and be and know in order to move our life forward in a healthy, loving way. So we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, all of our loved ones, parents and children, all of those we hold so dear in our heart. We see them in our mind's eye now when we wrap our spiritual arms around them. And we know that they are exactly as God made them, whole and perfect and complete, and that we are always one together. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world around us so that all of those things that pull at our attention that might make us fearful or feel separate in any way, we know that God is present right there even in the midst of that. Beyond all appearances, God is real. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And so with a full heart, I give thanks that this is the truth, that we each stand as open, willing, receptive vessels for God's light in the world. And with a full heart, I say thank you, God, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. Amen.